Please follow these directions mm. while taking notes on your colonial maps. Highlight and color in each um, of the colonial regions in the following colors. New England purple, middle colonies yellow, southern colonies red, circle the back country. On the back of the map, take notes on specific details of each colonial region. Color code the notes with the proper corresponding colors. The American colonies consisted of four distinct regions. New England, the Middle Colonies, or the Mid-Atlantic Colonies sometimes called, and the South. Also, there was something called the Back Country that ran through all three regions and encompassed the Appalachian Mountains. Each colonial region varied in geography, climate, and its ethnic makeup of the people who lived there. The first colonial region that we will be discussing is New England. New England consisted of New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. Massachusetts Bay Colony was one of the first British colonies on the North American mainland. People had lived there since the early 17th century. A bit about New England. Most of the settlers of New England were from England, hence the name. The first major colony was the Massachusetts Bay Colony in Plymouth, Massachusetts. The population was centered around small towns and townships. This made for a very close-knit community. Life was based on subsistence farming, meant the farmers grew just enough for their families to get by and only their families. Some communities like Upper Massachusetts, what is today Maine, and New Hampshire had large shipbuilding communities because of the tall forests that surrounded them. The biggest city in New England was Boston. Boston, as we will soon learn, becomes the hub of the American Revolution. The second colonial region that we will discuss is the Middle Colonies, or like I said, sometimes known as the Mid-Atlantic Colonies. The Mid-Atlantic Colonies consisted of New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. These were some of the wealthiest and most diverse colonies in the Americas. A bit about the Mid-Atlantic Colonies. The Mid-Atlantic colonies were the most diverse colonial region in North America, drawing people from England and the Netherlands and Germany. The first colony in the Mid-Atlantic colonies was New Amsterdam, which would eventually become New York. The great soil and large-scale farms made the economy a very profitable one. Trade and farming were big. Because of the large trade and farming economy, New York and Philadelphia grew into large port cities. The last formal colonial region that we will discuss today is the South. The South was consisted of the colonies of Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. The South was distinctly different than the other colonies because of its economy and the makeup of the people who would run the southern economy. The first American colony period was in Jamestown, Virginia. After a brief period of suffering and starvation, the colony itself began to thrive. 
The economy and the social class was based on a class system of planters, servants, and slaves. The first slaves in the Americas came to Jamestown. The basis of the economy originally was tobacco farming, but they would also farm rice and indigo. The economy was based on large plantations like the one that you could see in the picture to the right. There were no large cities like the Mid-Atlantic and New England, only large plantations. A colonial region of less severe designation was the backcountry. The backcountry spread throughout the entire Appalachian Mountain foothills, from the, from the nor northernmost point in New York to the southernmost point in northern Georgia. It started at the fall line, which is where waterfalls or rivers cascade down waterfalls into the lazy rivers that run into the ocean. Most of these people were small subsistence farms. They had very few slaves, even though they were op to, open to it. These were essentially poor people in search of their own land in order to farm. They could not afford, la afford land in the coast, and so they went in search of it in the hills. Now we will discuss the basis of the economy for the entire colonial region, something called the Triangle Trade. The Triangle Trade consisted of trade between North America, Europe, Africa, and back. The major things traded were raw goods, textiles and manufactured goods, and alcohol, and unfortunately, slaves. As we said, the triangle trade was the basis of the American colonial system. This system had raw goods being transported to Europe where they were manufactured. These goods were then sent to West Africa where they were traded for African slaves. The slaves were then transported along what was called the Middle Passage to the Americas where they would work on the plantations that created the raw goods. The largest raw goods that were transported were things like sugar, and tobacco. What the people in the Americas wanted back were things like manufactured furniture and textiles or clothing. After viewing the remainder of the lecture below your geography notes, write a paragraph explaining what daily life would have been like for a colonial American. Tonight we are going to talk about what life was like for the American colonists, what culture was like in the American colony, and what makes a common culture. It is important to understand that between 1609 with the founding of Jamestown in Virginia and 1776 with the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the 13 American colonies were very, very different and distinct due to geography, the culture of the people who founded them, and religion. All of these shaped each individual colony, and it wouldn't be until the French and Indian War that they actually were able to come together as a solid, semi-uniformed culture. First, a little vocabulary, things that we need to know and understand before going on. First off, the idea of mercantilism is an idea of having a favorable trade balance, meaning that you sell more things than you buy. It's essentially simple economics. You want to give more stuff away where you could get more money for it than you actually take in. The economy of America was based on maintaining a favorable trade balance with the motherland, England, and the rest of the world. 
The triangular trade was what we discussed in the previous slide. And the middle passage was an important part of the triangle trade, which is where slaves were imported from West Africa to the United States or to the Americas. Um, between 1 and 20 or 1 to 3 Africans died en route. They oftentimes faced horrible conditions during the middle passage as seen in the picture to the right. Life in the colonies was based on social class and land ownership just as it was in England. Land was plentiful in the Americas, but it was also a commodity. If you had land, you could sell whatever you produced on it. Land ownership meant political rights and prosperity. Land ownership helped create a social hierarchy throughout all of the colonies, however the South it was most distinct. The largest group was in fact small farmers, lower class people rented farms and then paid the landlord the right to farm there. Servants lived with the masters for a term of service, oftentimes five to seven years, where they would then be given their own land, most oftentimes in places like the back country over the fall line. Slaves unfortunately served for their entire life with no hope for freedom whatsoever. While being the least represented people in the colonies, women oftentimes were very, very, very important to the livelihoods of their entire families. Duties for women included cooking, churning butter, making soap, making candles, spinning, sewing, harvesting food, having their children, teaching their children, gardening, basically keeping the entire livelihood of the house going. Um, women bartered for much of their income with some of their neighbors. Some women ran taverns, which are essentially restaurants and bars. All property and money that uh, women made did belong to their husbands, however, and essentially in colonial life, women were the property of their husbands. They did not have any rights to their own, and many did not get the right to own their own land for many, many years to come, and essentially until they became Americans. This picture is what average day in a woman's life would have looked like. As you can see, there's kids in the front. Um, many families were very large, which upwards of 13, 14, 15 children. Um, you see the woman to the right rolling out dough for possibly baking bread. The woman in the very back, she is churning butter. The woman to the back left is spinning thread, or spinning yarn, or sorry, spinning wool into thread and then obviously the woman on the left is cooking. All of this would have happened in one central room essentially. This room here is the living room, the kitchen, the dining room, and then everything else and probably even at least a few kids bedrooms. Everything most often happened in one room. Some people in the Americas still keep it in the colonial fashion. Um, well, not quite colonial, but Amish and Mennonite people who live in Indiana, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, and upstate New York oftentimes um, use only technology that was invented no later than 1848. That means anything invented past 1848 is a no-go for them. Now, average work life for a family was difficult. Colonial life was not easy. Everybody worked. Everybody worked hard. Families had between six and eight children. They had so many children because many of them died in infancy and childbirth. The more kids, the more meant more workers. Boys started working at the age of three, and girls as well. Um, boys oftentimes were apprenticed out at age 11. An apprentice meant that you got to learn a trade, like making shoes, being a blacksmith, or being a tailor. Girls were meant to do household chores. Some girls would go away to learn how to weave, which is to make thread into fabric. My own great-grandfather was apprenticed out to be a cobbler, a shoe, which is a shoemaker, when he was five years old. That's not that long ago, this was the late 19th century, in the San Francisco Bay Area. 
Now, while uh, education is a very important part of our lives and every student is compulsory educated here in the United States, this was not the case in the colonies. The main purpose of education was to read the Bible. Um, most oftentimes, it was even people were educated in a religious fashion, as we got B is for Bible, C is for church. Most people learn from home were, and were taught by their mothers. Um, they learned essentially reading writing, and arithmetic, or the three R's, obviously misspelled there. The rich would have private tutors. This, however, led to disparaging literacy rates throughout the colonies. New England, who was very puritanical and religious, had the highest, where the South, which was very divided class-wise, had the lowest literacy rates. It was a crime, very punishable, if you taught a slave how to read and write. Where in the United States today we have a plethora of information available to us at our fingertips with our smartphones and computers, information was at a premium in the colonies. The Boston newsletter was, or new letter, was the first colonial newspaper. Most books were imported from England because there was not very many printing presses in the United States. And almanacs, as we see on the right, as Port Richard's Almanac, created by Ben Franklin, um, were the first magazines. And they included farming advice, astrology, meaning your horoscope and whatnot, and recipes. Benjamin Franklin was the first colonial millionaire, and he made his money through the printing of these almanacs, specifically Poor Richard's Almanac here. Um, women would buy them and share them as he would see what was best, um, when to farm, what kind of, uh, what kind of um, things would be happening to them, and to share recipes. Now that you know a little bit more about the American colonies, please can, or finish your paragraph at the bottom of your colonial, colonial American map explaining what daily life would have been like for a colonial American. Thank you, and I'll see you in class tomorrow.